So I was watching the video of the trucker that was extracted from his semi truck by a robot. You you had seen that because you sent it to me. You brought it to my attention. Yes. So I'm watching that video, right? And there's just it's insane when you think about it. Um, that robot walks over, and I actually watched the like some of the stations that put out the video only put out partly. Remember, you you had seen the part where he ripped off the door? Mm -hmm. So I went and I watched all of it. Okay. So originally, I guess a trucker, it's a low-speed chase, right? He refuses to pull over, and they and it's in Texas, I guess. Yeah, on, Houston. On I-10 there. And so they pull him over or block him in. They block off the interstate, and they call SWAT. Well, SWAT... I could just imagine SWAT back at the SWAT headquarters. Hey, we got a trucker blocked off in the interstate. You guys want to try that new robot thing you got? Oh, can we, can we, please, can we, can we? That's what the, it reminded <laughs> me of. It's like, oh, my gosh, we can tear someone's head off with a new robot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Does you know how people, you remember we lived in Pennsylvania, right? I'm not making fun. Well, maybe I am. Um, do you remember like the EMTs and all the firefighters were volunteer in Pennsylvania? Unless yeah. you live in a big city. But we weren't from a big city, right? So, and they all had little blue bubbles on their cars. And so like if something alarm went off, it was like all the little blue bubble guys that were driving around for free, they would like, it, it, it's almost like they would go crazy. Oh my God, there's a fire. Let's go see if we can smash windows, blah, blah, blah. Right? Like they all get off on that. So I can only imagine when this trucker... And I'm not defending the trucker because, I mean, if you're being chased by the police, <laughs> you probably should pull over, you know, whether you're innocent or not. But so they, they, they get the call, SWAT gets the call to, you know, extract a trucker. And it's like, well, let's take, you know, the thing or whatever you call it, right? Which I have the name of the robot. I looked that up too. So... The, the entire video shows this gigantic, I mean, the size of the arm on that robot is scary. They, it walks up to the trucker and like the little door on the sleeper, right? It literally punches right through it, pop. And, it, and, it, and, it, it, and next thing you know, two cops run up. They got helmets on and stuff like that. And they toss, I don't know, a tear gas or a smart bomb or something in the truck. I think it was tear gas was the one thing. Okay, so they, they taught, but they toss it in the original hole of the sleeper. Mm -hmm. See, they haven't even torn the door off yet. And then they, then they go over and they, and they call in the robot thing. And it just, like you see in the video, it annihilates the door, just tears the door off, right? And then there's a scene where it stops and, it's, and it rips the side apart, right? But finally when the door is off... They they call the dog here, Vito, right? And they and it jumps up, and the dog slides back out, and then the cop just gives the dog a lift, and then you know what happens when they send in the dog, one of those little mini German shepherds with with teeth that are the size of a a lion. It goes in and it clamps down on the trucker, probably. Anyways, to make a long story short, um, the article said that he was taken away bloody in the face it, it goes on to say that the SWAT used what's called the Rook the Rook the Rook that's the name of this robot so if you go on um, it's actually a website but anyways you can go on this website if you look up the Rook R-O-O-K and it's got a picture here, look, I'll show you, and anybody out there listening can just check it out. Armored critical incident vehicle is what the Rook is called. Yeah. And you see you see how it's got, you know, the way it moves and all? Yeah, it's got, like, right. tank, tank wheels. And it allows, thing. like, Tracks. four armed cops, heavily armed, to go behind it while it's leading the way to break down whatever. Well, Beats having to carry one of those ramming... You know those how they use those big ramming things. Oh yeah, no doubt. Um, but anyway, so 
Uh, you can actually price one. There's, there's the on this website. It says features and pricing. So I guess, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can get your own rook. I guess. I, I don't know. But then there's a little thing to fill out, right? When you click on pricing, and you could order one of those robots. You know what it reminds me of? Do you remember uh, the movie RoboCop? Right. Yeah. Well, do you remember? I think it was RoboCop two, where the RoboCop, right? now has an arch nemesis, but it's a big, round, mean-looking, more advanced RoboCop. Yeah, it's, it's big the and actual bulky. whole robot. No. It's like big and bulky. Mm -hmm. Remember that? Mm -hmm. And it beats the crap out of, you know, RoboCop. Whatever, blah, blah, blah. But this thing here, the Rook, reminds me of that. And so I'm just guessing all your big companies... Maybe J.B. Hunt, Swift, Schneider, and all those companies. They're going to probably take away their dispatchers and just order a bunch of rooks. <laughs> I, I'm just, I mean, just the way that, that thing <laughs> tore the trucker, the truck apart, which he destroyed that truck. I could just see dispatchers. Because, you know, you know, speaking of robots, I was at the mall not too long ago, and Tesla now has a robot. You can you know, buy a, a robot for your house. It looks like a human. I guess you could program it to do all kinds of things. But I was online watching one of the robots boxing people and beating the hell out of people. So all I can picture is these, you know, big trucking companies going from dispatcher to robot. Robatcher. Yeah, robatcher. <laughs> Aerobitcher. <laughs> right? I can only imagine that, you know, you will take the load or else okay. here is your choice. You have a Bronx load. I want that load. You are set for termination. I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just serious. It's like, what's the world coming to? I couldn't even believe it. I, I mean, I was like, they're using freaking robots now to fight crime. It's just, it's it's so, I don't know, it's just so weird. Everything you see on TV almost seems to come true anymore. It does, it does. I agree with you. There's a lot, that's why some of the shows, some of the movies that came out, I don't want to, I mean, I've seen most of them, but I'm like, uh, that seems like it was thought too clearly, like the process of it, like Saw. Saw, I could actually see stuff like that happening because... I could see some demented person actually creating those types of situations. Hostile, Saul, yeah. See, I just, I don't believe in, in, in Freddy, though. Well, my thing is this. You've got, you know, they announced about autonomous driverless trucks, right? We talked about that last week. Mm -hmm. Now they got robots. And to me, there's a thing called hackers, mm -hmm. right? So you got autonomous trucks and now you got robots and all this other stuff. What about like some of these hackers taking over and you know what I mean? You got an autonomous truck going east on 70. The next thing you know, it's going south instead of north. Somebody just hacked the whole load, you know? <laughs> I'm just saying it's just, it's something the way everything's being computed. I don't think I like it the way everything is going. I just, I, I, I don't, I, it's... It's uh, trucking is changing so crazy. And I don't, I don't want to be a Debbie Downer, you know, but trucking and everything is changing so fast right before our eyes. And before you know it, it'll be like some of these movies, a little bit on the creepy side. Anyways. I just don't see the benefit of taking away the people's jobs. I don't either. But I'd say, you know, we'll just keep seeing it. And reporting it, and hopefully nobody will get a dispitcher. A dispitcher? <laughs> Dis what do you call it? A robitcher? A robatcher. That's what I called it. A robatcher. Yeah. Hopefully nobody will hire robots. I mean, AI is taking over everything mm -hmm. on AI anymore. Videos, it's all done by mm -hmm. some computer voice. No, I agree. It's, it's, I think that I think that it's going it's going too far. I seen. I shared it. It was a video that someone made and they were showing how people can be um, misled Clone. and it had this guy 
and he put on this little girl mask. And when he put it on, it looked just like, because the whole thing, he put it all the way on and then he tucked it like the, down the neck. He tucked the bottom part into his shirt and he just moved his head. And when he moved his face and everything, the mask itself moved completely with him. And the way you set your computer up, you know, because it was to try and, and, you know, they were saying that these are the things that, that are luring kids um, on the computer and, you know, other people. But um, they had, they showed how this, they can make it look like this little girl's, this person who was a guy looked just like a little girl sitting at her computer, playing on her computer. And it's just it's super creepy. Just, just ugh. Mm-mm-mm. Anyways, so... That's my trucker story of the week. And by the way, the article goes on to say that he was, he seemed very intoxicated or something. You don't, I mean, it could have been a mental, you know what I mean? Like a mental episode even, you know what I'm saying? Um, They said while he was sitting there before the robot, you know, ripped the truck apart, he was literally revving up the motor that spin in the tires because they had the armored cars blocking him, I guess. And he couldn't move, but he just kept revving the motor up for a couple hours. So my only advice to drivers at this point, um, especially if you're near a big city and you feel like going on a little rampage, maybe, you know, tearing up the neighborhood, (laughs) acting all big and bad. I would tell you, be careful of these robots because they ain't playing right now. It's true. You know, um, it's just it's not a good ending if you're being chased by the cops. I would say pull over, put your hands in the air and get out before, you know, the dogs and the robots and everything's called in. Well, what's really, I mean, that whole article is crazy to begin with, but one of the funny things about that whole thing is, like you said, it was a low speed. When I say low speed, it said he was going just under 10 miles per hour. Exactly. In the article. So he, it's like... I don't, he, he couldn't shift. He was just stuck going, and he took him on like four miles. Well, even though you're, you, you might think, okay, I'm just not going to stop, and that way the cops might not get that upset. Well, it's their pride. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you're making us look stupid. Here we are doing the O.J. Simpson five-mile-an-hour chase here across you know the country. Remember when they chased O.J.? And it was like five miles an hour or whatever. But anyways, the bottom line is if you're going to be literally going on a rampage, it's not going to end well. Anyways, that's all I got to say about that. Let's move on. Moving on. Moving on. Welcome to the show. Hey, people. Yeah. You know what I was thinking about? Remember last week we were talking about Barbie? Yeah. Trucker Barbie. Yeah. Trucker Barbie. I was thinking about how... You know, I wonder if they're going to just, you know, if, if they're creating this, you know, this Barbie doll thing, mm-hmm. are they going to like create like a series like regional Barbie, OTR Barbie, maybe even put a little cord in the back of her, you know, and you pull it and she'll be like, breaker, breaker, you got Barbie, you know, stuff like that. I'm serious. A little Barbie girl. Yeah. I don't know what to do with him sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Just saying, you know, make the doll realistic. You know what I mean? <laughs> if you're going to teach the young ladies how to be a trucker, man, teach them how to do it right. That's so it. have a flatbed, a flatbed one with some, dragging some chains with her. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Flatbed Barbie. I like that. That's a real good one. Flatbed Barbie. Put a little grease on her arms, you know. Have her, hey, you, you know, if you're going to do flatbed Barbie and you're going to do dry van Barbie and reefer Barbie, you know, all that other stuff. Like, give her little DOT drug screens, and then maybe even, you know, it's just for the little kids, you know, to play with. You know, maybe even put little way stations in, have her pull in and get a ticket, you know, stuff like that. You know, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, I, th- I think your way went off. Well, I'm just saying, make it real. If you want to you wanna teach kids or young ladies to be truckers, you know, go all the way. You, know? you way went off on that run. It's gone. Have them, have them sit at a Walmart for like four extra hours, you know, something like that. Anyways. <laughs> okay. Moving on. Moving on. Hey, let's take a break. 
Truck Parking Club is a network of instantly reservable daily and monthly truck parking locations throughout the U.S. Truck Parking Club helps connect truckers to truck parking locations throughout the U.S. via truckparkingclub.com. Our networks is made up of property owners that have locations adequate for truck parking to list on the platform. This includes trucking companies, storage companies, CDL schools, trailer leasing companies, real estate investors, truck parking operators, and more. Go to truckparkingclub.com today. Hey, drivers, are you sick of watching the other drivers bypass the way station while you are held up going through yourself? Well, download DriveWise today at www.drivewise.com. That's D-R-I-V-E-W-Y-Z-E.com. And start bypassing the scales yourself. If you're a small carrier, an owner-operator, or even a big fleet looking for something better, check out DriveWise today. And remember, there's no equipment, no transponders needed when you're using DriveWise. Check them out for a free download at www.drivewyze.com. Drivers, if you're looking for a local home everyday driving job, apply with Carter Lumber today. They have positions for Class A and Class B local drivers. They can take experienced drivers, students, and non-CDL drivers. With over 160 locations, chances are they have a position for you. So go to carterlumber.com forward slash talk CDL and apply today. Again, that's carterlumber.com forward slash talk CDL. Thank you. If you're a driver looking for a new trucking job, check out NCI. NCI offers the following. New Kenworth T680s, competitive wages, solo team and students welcome, plus a full benefit package for you and your family. Check them out today at 888-311-7076. That's 888-7076. And tell them TalkCDL sent you. So I got the five deadliest states for like black ice and stuff like that. Ooh. You want to know what they are? Yes, I do. I mean, and, and in no particular order, but I was wondering about that because, you know, there's snow and then there's ice and then there's black ice, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, if you're a driver, you know, most truckers that drive in winter conditions, you know, driving in packed snow is not bad, especially if you have weight. You just take your time. You know, you don't have to be running 70 mile an hour, you know. You can go with the flow of traffic and just stay steady if you got to keep going. But when ice, when ice forms, you know, you want to, you want to get off the road. Um, black ice, you know, you know, I, I was reading the most common time for black ice to form. What do you think the most common time in a 24 hour period in a daytime? What do you think the most common uh, time or most, probably most common time percentage wise when black ice is out there? I would say probably like two hours after the sunset. Nope, it's not. It's right when the sun's coming up in early mornings. Mm-hmm. In fact, every time that I've ever been on black ice was usually um, my my two worst black ice moments. Uh, wh- the one when back in, I forget what year it was, but the... Um, Entire Pennsylvania was shut down all the way to Chicago. That was when I was running dedicated to Chicago. And the uh, out in Pine Grove, where the All-American truck stop is, Mm -hmm. I had gotten out there late at night, and it was just coming down crazy. And they were shutting down the interstates, and it was too late to turn around and go back home. So I just just parked there at the All-American. Well, I got up at... I would say four o'clock in the morning and I was going to head south on 81. And as I was coming out of the truck stop, 
I was seeing trucks that had slid off, I guess, in the middle of the night. They were coming in. But the roads, I got on 81 South. The road looked clear. You know, it just looked a little wet. You know what I mean? And I'm telling you, it was too late. Once you get on the interstate, you don't want to just stop on the interstate and wait, right? Right. So I'm just creeping down the interstate, and I and I could tell. And there's trucks. And when I say trucks, I'm not joking. Um, this was in the late 90s. Um, there was like yellow freight and overnight and all those doubles. They were upside down everywhere. I, I literally, between Pine Grove and Harrisburg, I I couldn't tell you how many trucks I had to go around on the interstate. They were up the bank. They were in. On, but anyways, that's when I, I was, I was doing maybe 15 miles an hour, maybe 20. And I just touched the fuel. And my tractor kicked out and went totally sideways. And I could see the trailer... It kicked to the left, so I look. I could look out my passenger or my driver's side window, and I'm just looking at my trailer pushing me down straight. I'm just literally going straight down the interstate. Nobody's around, just me. And so I kick the uh, uh, gear shifter into neutral, and the tractor came around because you don't want to be on the brakes in ice ever. You and the reason you don't want to be on brakes. The, the real reason is you want your wheels turning. If you lock up your brakes, you're you're just going to go the way the truck pushes you. That's just a fact. So if you have nerve enough to get your foot off the brake, off the fuel, get the pressure off the fifth wheel, it, my tractor came right around. And it happened to me maybe 10 minutes later again, only the opposite side. I did the exact same thing, and it came back around. I got, I got to... Uh, I got to the TA there outside of Harrisburg and just parked there until that's when they, they literally officially shut the roads down. And, uh, you know, it was just super dangerous. But to make a long story short, I could not. It, you'd swear that there was nothing on that road. It, you, you would. Right. Black ice is also called clear ice. Well, yeah, because it's considered, quote, black because you're seeing the macadam itself. It's not, it's like a thin layer of ice going on the, on the, on the road itself. Correct. So the second time it happened to me was in Chicago. Again, we, we, it was a Saturday morning. We had just gotten loaded. Um, remember Gary from mm-hmm. Maryland? Mm-hmm. Okay. Him and was the other guy, Craig? The three of us had gotten loaded. And we were just we were coming out of Chicago. Before you get into Indiana, there you go over that um, bridge where the big rock quarry area is at on eighty ninety there. And it was like it only just turned daylight, and all you seen again the road did not look at all like it had ice, and um, we had to slow down because there was people wrecking in front of us. Cars were sliding all over the place. And Gary just gently, Gary was a really experienced driver, by the way. Gary just politely and calmly got on the CB and he says, your trailer's, he says, your trailer's coming around. And I looked and here comes my trailer. It was because I was tapping my brakes. So this time, the original time in Pennsylvania when I, when I went into a jackknife, it was because I hit the fuel and, and, and it, and it kicked my tractor. Well, this time I tapped the brakes and the trailer started coming around. And so all I did, all I did was kind of um, turned into it and and uh, everything came back around. It wasn't around too far that I couldn't catch it. And so bottom line was both times that I had black ice was early morning. Just like this report that I read said, the most common time for black ice is early morning. That's not saying you can't be any other times. It's just saying the most common time is in the morning. Isn't it when um, they say that it is actually the coldest time is right before the sun comes up? If it's if it's cold out, like wind and stuff like that's usually the coldest. 
That's a great point. Actually, you're right. I never even thought of that. But yeah, and in fact, when you go hunting or whatever the case is, you would think when the sun comes up, it would be warmer, but it's not. You know, that first hour or two early in the morning, it's like the temperatures just drop always. And uh, that's, you, you know, usually when you're going to have your black eyes. So drivers, you know, just be careful out there. Um, here's a list of the, this is the ones with the most fatalities because of ice. Um, Pennsylvania is one of them. Mm. Our, our alma mater. Uh, it says with 197 fatalities from winter driving, Pennsylvania is, and this was over like a three or a four year study. It says uh, Pennsylvania is the second deadliest state due to nearly uh, 40 winter driving deaths a year. I mean, that's a lot of deaths in a couple month period because of winter conditions, being that they have probably hundreds and hundreds of wrecks or thousands of wrecks, 40 of them result in deaths on average just in Pennsylvania. This is not counting everybody. It says the deadliest road crashes occur on Interstate 80, a major through fare that runs across the entire state. It connects New York and Ohio Two states on our list for the highest winter driving fatality. So uh, it says also Ohio with 172 fatalities from winter driving. Ohio is one of the dangerous states. The deadliest road for fatal crashes in Ohio is I-71, which connects Columbus, Cleveland, and Cincinnati. The highway saw seven fatalities. So that was part of the four-year um, study. Michigan is actually the number one state. Michigan. I could see Michigan being yeah. up there because of the, the lake effects. It says with a eye popping 282 winter driving fatalities. Michigan is the highest number winter weather related fatal crashes. During the four year period, um, there were four or 282 deaths due to bad weather. And, and uh, it says uh, it's, you know, most likely, if you remember, they have like the lake effect and they have lakes on both sides. And one of the big causes for black ice is lakes, you know, make uh, the roadways icy. Yeah, with the humidity and not humidity, but the just the condensation that's just in the air from the lakes themselves with the snow and stuff. But um, shoot, I forgot what I was going to say. OK, well, if you remember, just yell. Um, the next state was New York, 183 deaths. Oh, I know what I was going to be. Go ahead. This isn't saying that there have it's it's all tractor trailer. This is cars too, is what I was meaning. It's like all around, or is it just? Um, it's just winter related fatalities okay. in vehicles. Okay. Yes, yeah, so it could be, you know, people in cars dying, trucks. But it's really the point is is the black ice. No, no, I agree. Um, but anyways, New York was number four. And then Illinois, with 135 fatalities. And uh, it says Chicago, which is where I almost jackknifed, uh, was the biggest contributor uh, and, you know, to the deaths in winter conditions. Um, actually, Cook County is the big one with uh, 30 deaths just in that county hmm. from, yeah, from do, uh, the, the, the the icy condition. It says uh, the same time period, which is more than there were. Yeah, it says in that same period, 18 states, like including like Arkansas, California, New Mexico, all that, literally Cook County had more accidents than 18 states combined in that period. Yeah, it is. So... Anyways, you know, that's just a little advice on my, my, my advice to truck drivers. Because truck drivers, they'll, they'll, they'll write in and they'll ask, you know, about... Uh, we've had how many truckers write in and they'll be like, what should I do? My, my dispatcher told me I, should, I need to keep driving. He doesn't believe me that the roads are slippery. You know, my advice always to every driver, and every trucking company should be giving the same advice, is you're the captain of the ship. We've been saying this for the seven years we're on the air with then. And you're the captain of the ship. There's no dispatcher that's going to go to court 
and say, yeah, we threatened him with firing him if he didn't keep going. And, you know, so we're the blame. They're going to deny everything. You're going to be literally, you will be the guy on the guillotine. You'll be the guy on the chopping block. So you're the captain of the ship. If you feel that it's unsafe, if you're tired for any reason, don't do it. Don't drive for the simple reason you are on your own. If you, if you're bullied into it or you're the one that decides to do it, you're the guy that's going to be in trouble because you are the captain of the ship. So either way, the captain of the ship be in charge of that ship and know when it's safe, or you can be considered the captain of the ship when you wreck and then you're going to get in trouble. So my advice, get to a safe haven. I agree. And you know, there is, when the roads are bad, you know, all your phones, you, you, there's, there's way to show, you know, like screenshot the weather showing that how the, the, the temperatures drop down. You could send it to your dispatcher's proof saying, Hey, it's, it's bad here. And then when they start shutting, like they, the big accident, wasn't it like a 43 car accident that just happened this week? Yeah. That was so, a bad one. you know, they, sh- they say, Hey, the roads are bad. They, it's publicized. So all you have to do is show that. And your dispatcher, what's he going to sit there and tell the boss? Well, you know, he told me it was that way. And I just told him to keep going. You know, he's not going to want you to go and do that. You know, no, I agree hundred percent. So that's all I'm saying. All we're saying is you guys are in charge of that truck. Ultimately, you're the guy that puts on the pu- pushes your foot down on the fuel. You're the person that literally they're going to come to first to blame. You are the one they want to blame. And I guarantee you, I don't care how much you think your trucking company's behind you. If you get into a wreck because you're tired, okay, or because you were driving on icy roads and you knew you shouldn't have been, there's nobody in the world going to come to your aid and go, yeah, we made him do it. We told him to do it. That's not going to happen. That's why you'll never see it on your Qualcomm or in your communication or in your text. You know, it, in fact, if you feel you have to drive because your job's in a, a threatened and you think you're going to, I would just have the company, would, would you go ahead and send that over to me in a text so I have it here, you know, put it in writing. Put that in writing, dispatcher. Um, send that to me, and I guarantee you that's when they're not going to, and they're they're not going to care if you shut down at that point. Moving no, on, they're not going to care. Moving on, moving on. So you know, I seen this poor trucker. You know, it's it, there's a a a little uh, article I read about a trucker that was found, I guess, in a parking lot in his rig in Arkansas, dead. Right, But it's not the typical death. It says authorities have provided new information on the cause of death for a trucker found in a parked rig in a grocery store in Arkansas. Right, Just a couple months ago, they finally released how he died. It said, um, in November, the body of a 35-year-old Georgia-based truck driver okay, was found inside a parked truck um, at Harps Grocery Store in Mansfield, Arkansas. Uh, his last name was Kida, Kieta. It says he had reportedly been inside the truck, parked on the lot for three days before he was found dead. Then it goes on to say Kieta's company requested a welfare check, which they should have. Um, if they, you know, if you have a satellite in your truck, I wouldn't wait three days, you know, but it says after three days, they requested a welfare check and told authorities that he had recently been out of the country and possibly had an illness. I know because this gets bizarre. That's why I said the poor sap. I mean, it's, you don't even know something's going to kill you. It says, has the hazmat team was deployed. So because they said to him, well, you know, he was out of the country. And guess where he went? Africa. Oh. What's it? What's in Africa? Everything. Well, I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They're in Australia, right? You know, but so you think, okay, well, he was in Africa. What do you think he got? Well, most likely the, the they show up in hazmat you, out, outfits. So I'm thinking they're thinking Ebola, which if somebody has Ebola, right, it's like, 
85% is the death rate. If you get Ebola, okay, if you and 99 other people get Ebola together, 85 of you are going to die. And 15 on average will make it. That's how bad Ebola is. It's like the highest death rate disease, I think, that anybody knows about. And I could be wrong. Um, it says, um, Travis Cooper, Sebastian County Emergency Manager uh, Management Officer, reported shortly after the body was discovered that Kieta was in Mansfield to pick up a load of lumber but never arrived at the facility. Okay. So... Um, they just released it this week in, in, you know, the first week of January, rather. The, the autopsy results indicating that he passed away from, listen to this, it's called cerebral malaria due to a mosquito-borne parasite called Plasmodium falciparum. It says... They reported that he had traveled overseas to Africa and returned to the U.S. in November. This is when he died. He was treated for an illness in a hospital in Ponca City, Oklahoma on November 16th. At that time, he tested negative for COVID-19, influenza, pneumonia, and, so, and SARS. So they tested him for all these, you know, SARS and COVID and all that stuff, and he tested negative for that. It said... Kieta was released from the hospital and then died on the 17th. So he was in the hospital on the 13th for a few days, released a few days later. So it must have been pretty damn sick, right? So he, he's released on the 17th and then found, you know, days later in his truck, all because the poor guy's over there, you know, on vacation or maybe visiting family or friends, and some stupid little mosquito bites him. And you don't even know you're a dead man. You know what I'm saying? It's like just the littlest thing could just kill you on this planet. <laughs> you, I mean, how do you how do you combat that? You can't. <laughs> it makes you crazy. I mean, honestly, I think malaria is still one of the number one killers in the world every year. And did you know out of every animal and every creature, anything, the most the biggest way to die is by mosquito. It's like a mosquitoes kill like a couple million people a year. They get they, that's because they carry so much diseases. They're so dirty little things. Yeah, well they they stick their 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 needle tongue thingy it's, it's, in everyone. They don't it, care. They ha, they don't discriminate. They suck out the blood and then they they cross contaminate you when they come up to you and say, "Ooh, you look delicious," and they knock you up too. And next thing you know, you've got. Um, what, what, there's, there's like three different things. West Nile virus. There it is. Yeah. The West Nile virus or malaria or something, other little nasty little thingies. Yeah. Well, that's what I'm saying. And they, it's like they fly around. It looks like a little straw, right? You'd think that they just pop you, suck your blood and then move on. But somehow they, they, they give you this, this disease and they're so tiny. It's amazing how something so little can, can give you a little piece of, bacteria or a parasite that kills you. It's, it's, it's crazy. And so this poor driver, you know, so what advice would we give driver these days? How do you give advice on that? Because we have mosquitoes. Don't go out the country. <laughs> yeah, but we have mosquitoes here. Like you said, people, did you know that people in the United States, I think it's like 12 to 50 people a year in the U.S. dies from West Nile virus. That's never gone away. Of course, the media don't use that as a scare tactic anymore. And back when they were scaring everybody about 10 years ago, guess what? The same amount of people were dying. They've always died of that. You know, they just found that little thing to pick on people with. But the bottom line is, you know, you could tell a trucker, well, don't go out of the country, but, but then they get a West Nile virus bite. You just don't know. This is crazy. Do you know the mosquitoes carry this, this other disease? And if a pregnant woman gets bit by it, she can get um, what's called Zinka. Yeah, I Florida had that. Mm -hmm. A bunch of them. Yeah, the babies end up being deformed. They all look the same. Yeah, it's yeah. a shame. Yeah. So, anyways, Ruth, and that's that's pretty much my podcast for the week. I I um was just I I think I was more surprised over that robot thing than anything. It, it's like I can't even imagine in five ten years from now what. 
what it's going to be like in this on this planet you know you know we're at the very beginning of of robocops walking around it's going to get crazy but you'll who knows you'll see this like this this camera not the camera but like this thing hoovering or hovering over a tractor and all of a sudden land and then all of a sudden it crawls up to the to the tractor and rips the front open on it and and the guy's going ah He's, he's driving. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Do you remember the movie? Was it called Minority Report with Tom Cruise? Do you yeah. remember that? Yeah. So if they if they they had those three mind readers or whatever they were, they had, remember that the whatever they called them, and they could predict when somebody like fates. What were they called? Like the fates or something like that. There are fates. Well, anyways, the bottom line was they had these. They had the power to predict when you were going to kill somebody. Right before you killed them, they would arrest you and convict you on something you were gonna do. Yeah, I think didn't they like lay in water or something like that, and they had things like it was a dream. Yeah, but the bottom line is though, it's like, is that our future? Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, is is it gonna get so advanced in wackiness? I don't know if it would be that advanced that people are gonna be able to look into the future that way, but the the techniques that they use for for catching you and for doing other things are going to be pretty outrageous, I think. Yeah, I can't even imagine. I mean, they're coming up with trucks that could drive themselves. Well, I, you know, not to keep going on futuristic things, but what was that movie? Was it Dennis Hopper where they were, they were, they were truckers, but they were in outer space. I think one of the Alien movies, they were actually truckers, you know, um, driving truck. Uh, it looked kind of like a tractor trailer spaceship. You remember that? It was like, is that going to be the future for truckers? You know, are they going to have, are they going to start putting colonies on the moon and on Mars and stuff? And truckers will drive their space trucker. And I think there's a movie called Space Trucker, but drive your space semi. As everyone's Googling now, space trucker. <laughs> yeah. You'll, you'll drive your space truck ship. You know, to Mars, you'll, you'll, I got to take a load, yeah, to the red planet, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're going to get or, reports later. Google, Google reported massive amounts of, of Googling of space trucker. It's the first time in ages that we people have, have cracked 15 million searches at one time. <laughs> All right. Okay, with, with that being said, Ruthann, <laughs> do you have the word of the day? I do. Um, I do have the word of the day, but I did want to mention one thing real quick. Um, that one driver, David Schultz, that's still missing. Yes. The um, Sac County sheriffs there in Iowa uh -huh. still have not found them. They're asking for as much help as possible. Was that Iowa? Yes. Okay. So there's still nothing that has come on as far as being able to come up with anything for him. I also could not find anything on the Ice Pick Bandit. That I've done searches on. So if anybody has heard anything on him, let me know because I can't find anything on him. It's like he disappeared after getting. Well, maybe he felt the heat on. He might have. You know, I'm serious. You know, like because they've been looking from for the ice pick, what, or the ice pick bandit flattening trucker tires all the way up to Ohio, all the way down to Florida. Mm -hmm. So who knows? You know, I-75 is really what his stomping ground is, and maybe. With with those, remember there were some images of of of, mm -hmm. of of that one guy they want to talk to. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's seen it, and he's like, "Yo, man, I'm gonna go into hibernation like the BTK killer or whatever did for like 15 years." I got Hey, I got one thing I forgot about. Okay. And, uh, you know, you know Ben. Mm -hmm. You know, we did an interview with Ben, and you know he writes in. He's a really cool guy. He's a the Canadian trucker mm -hmm. that um, runs down to California a lot. You know, on the West Coast. Um, I, I was like, I haven't heard from Ben in a while, you know, cause like we have, we have different people that write in, so we know them and we kind of interact with them. They're really cool, you know? And I'm like, wow, I, I just realized Ben usually sends us something and we'll, you know, go back and forth. And so I, I sent him a message I'm like, Ben, man, you okay? I haven't heard from you in a while. And he literally sends me a picture, this trucker of him in a neck cast Oh my gosh. He went to a Hawaii and was body surfing. Now you know where are the biggest waves in the world? Hawaii and like Australia, I guess, right? Yeah. So he's in Hawaii body surfing 
and the waves slammed him down. So I don't know if you ever if you ever surfed or anything like that. Um, there's a if if when the wave goes out or comes in before it and behind it, it's it gets real shallow mm-hmm. because all the wa- all the water's in the air at the wave, and the wave slammed him down head first, and. They, they literally, people had to rescue him, I guess, and rush him to the hospital. And he said he thought for sure he had a broken neck. Mm-hmm. He said, you know, he was so upset that, you know, that he would never be able to, like, maybe walk again and protect his wife and, you know, pick her up and dance. I mean, he was, like, really sad. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I was praying, and I was just, oh, he was just you know, emotional wreck. It sounded like, you know, here's this trucker with his big beard and he's got this big neck cast on, you know, it's like, you just never know in a blink of an eye. So anyway, shout out to Ben, you know, prayers for you, man. Hope you heal soon. And you're back in a rig, you know, running down the roads. Cause he loves being a trucker, Ruth. And that guy is pure trucker. So shout out to Ben. We really pray that you, um, you know, get, get healed. Um, so anyways, go ahead, take over Ruth and give us the word of the day. What, where can it, Canadian body surf in Canada. I just said he was in Hawaii. I know you said he was in Hawaii, but did he go to Hawaii for the first time to first time body surf? Yeah. That was my curious question. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you don't body surf in Canada. So when you go to Hawaii to surf, you're what's called a novice or a rookie or a beginner. First time body surfing. You know what? If you're going to surf for the first time, I would suggest the Gulf of Mexico where the waves are about three feet high. You when know? you're lucky. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yeah, the waves don't get high in the Gulf. I would say maybe start there. Hawaii's a little bit tough. I mean, they're, I don't know what the size of the waves are there, everything, but like they're like 10, 20 footers. I mean, they're just... He just up. jumped right in it. Yeah, he didn't. He jumped right in it like a pro. He did it right. Anyways, moving on. <laughs> moving on. All right, guys, are you ready for this one? Yes. All right. Every day, every use. This is from Word Genius. Georgic. Georgic? Georgic. Ready? I'm going to do it again. Georgic. 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 Give me the definition. Does it have anything to do with Georgia? No, it means rustic or pastoral, meaning like, you know, like um, country. You know, if you see something country, they have like a picture of the, those chairs that you really like, the ones that we have over, like those, those chairs. Around, uh, Adirondack chairs or whatever yeah, with like a cowhide on it. That's what they have around like a campfire. That's what they're considering it. So something that's Georgic is rustic or pastoral meaning country or something that you would see like Midwesty, you know. That's super cool. Um, what was I going to ask you? Um, I, we almost forgot to mention the truck shows. We have Two to possibly three truck shows starting in February. There's one in March, and then there's one in April. We're going to try to hit all. Well, we already scheduled for two. Um, obviously, the uh, the Florida truck show. They're great people, Ruthann. Mm-hmm. They really are. The people that are running the Florida truck show. If, you're, if you haven't signed up for the Florida truck show, it's growing. These people run a truck show in Houston every year now, which I hear that's growing. They have one in California. I don't know. I think they might have one or two elsewhere and they just started last year was the first one i think for uh, for florida and it's supposed to be a lot bigger this year even it's going to be in fort lauderdale talk cdl is going to be there um we'll have our equipment stop down to fort lauderdale do you have the booth number for the florida truck show not for that one no you don't have it i'm going to pull it up real quick go ahead and and uh i have matt's matt's is i have that that booth number is six six one zero five we'll be down in the near the recruiting section of the building. So um, a corner booth will be down there. You'll see us set up. We would love for everybody to stop by, say hi to us, get a picture taken. Um, don't know what all we'll have to be given out, but you know, definitely would be able to have you sign on my paper so that I can give shout outs to everybody once we start recording again in the studio. We'll do some recording there, but generally it's really hard to do a lot of recording at the truck shows because of the so loud on the outside. And you've got so many people that love to play music and we can't do a, a live show with the music playing behind us for copyright reasons. So it makes it a little difficult there. So we might be able to do some 
like interviews or any kind of stuff like that outside the building or maybe grab a coffee and have, you know, do something that way. But we'll definitely have all of our equipment with to be able to do um, some one-on-one or, you know, some type of, of interviews that way. So definitely want to be able to say hi to everybody. That is March 21st to the 23rd there in Kentucky, booth number 66105. And Florida Truck Show is when, Troy? The Florida Truck Show is in February. Um, I'll get the date here in a second, but the booth number is 1729. 1729. Great people. Um, I, I want to say it's uh, at the end of February, Ruth Ann. Let me look and see. I don't actually have the date. It's in February. We're scheduled to be there on um, the 24th and the 25th. 24th and the 25th is going to be the Florida Truck Show. And the booth number again? Uh, was it 1729? 1729. All righty. So there you have all that. And then the Chrome Shop is at the end of April, it's like the 20-something. We'll get the dates for that and if we're going. But, yeah, uh, they're all great truck shows. The Louisville Truck Show, if you've never been to that one, I forget the number. It's insane. It's like a million square feet. They have big entertainers that come. At the inside, there's like, I forget how many different rooms are part of it. And when I say rooms, like stadium rooms, are just it's just enormous. You You really can't see... It in one day, you know that, right? You, it, it's almost impossible. The it the the Louisville Truck Show, it's almost impossible to see every vendor in the three days that it's open. It's it's that big. If you want to seriously stop and talk to people, it's insane. Anyways, Ruthann, that's it. Do you have anything else? Uh, peace, peace, praise the Lord. <laughs>